For the past month, I have been struggling to make this video. I've been struggling to make the script. I've been struggling with the research. I've been struggling with everything. And I'm probably struggling with editing future Mia. Fuck you. The subject was supposed to be about language and how we as pseudo-academics on the internet should use language. Or rather how maybe we shouldn't use some kind of language. To do this, I was going to compare and contrast different authors to see where there are strengths, to see where there are weaknesses. No, you can't do that in a single YouTube video. That's too much work. So I looked for examples of inaccessible language or language that is laden with academic jargon. And I found one specific author. And then when I looked to find more accessible language, language that more people have an easier time understanding, connecting with, I found the same guy. Jordan Peterson. And you know, that sucks, right? Because so many people have already done videos on the sweet, sweet doctor. But I haven't. And I don't really have a perspective on the deeper insights of Peterson's ideology. To be fair, I don't want to. But I have yet for this video read both 12 Rules for Life and Maps of Meaning which if you don't know, inc includes Chaos Dragons. And seemingly, depending on who you asked, Jordan Peterson was either a convoluted mess of ideological jargon high in the elitist academia, or he was someone who spoke the common tongue, so to say. Someone who could connect with someone who hasn't read too much academia. Someone who isn't super into philosophy. And that seemingly depended on whether or not you already agreed with the deeper ideology that Peterson proposes. I had a hard time finding an answer. Was he some convoluted mess? A confusing blob of weird masculinity and lobsters? Or was he someone who had just struck a chord in a society that perhaps has a crisis of masculinity? And I've come to a few insights in my reading because I placed myself in the position of an interested reader. I wanted to learn the philosophies of the Great Doctor. And the first conclusion I have discovered is that literally everyone is wrong, somehow. And the second conclusion I have discovered is, perhaps, that maybe Jordan Peterson is perhaps the greatest philosopher of the 21st century. However, this video isn't about Jordan Peterson. This video is about language. So let's talk about inaccessible. By inaccessible language, I mean language that is too complex, convoluted, filled with academic jargon. In academia, this is sometimes known as academic language, or at least it was in my university. And before I go any longer, I would like to give an example of what inaccessible language could be. So the first of Dr. Peterson's well-known published books, Maps of Meaning, begins with this line. The world can be validly construed as forum for action, or as place of things. Which, okay, that's not the most obvious sentence in the world to start off the book with, but let's see how Dr. Peterson explains this sentence. The former manner of interpretation more primordial and less clearly understood finds is a... The the former manner of interpretation, more primordial and less clearly understood, finds its expression in the arts or humanities, in ritual, drama, literature, and mythology. The world as forum for action is a place of value, a, pl 
place where all things have meaning. This meaning, which is shaped as a consequence of social interaction, is implication for action, or at a higher level of analysis implication, for the configuration of the interpretive schema that produces or guides action. What? Now I cite this as an example of academic inaccessible language. But I don't do it to illustrate why it's a bad thing. Other people have already talked about how Peterson is somehow incoherent sometimes. But this block of text, it's very academic. Look at the quote again. I don't understand what's there. But then again, I'm not a clinical psychologist. Now, Maps of Meaning is a boring academic book. And it's made for boring academic people. I sometimes feel that it's a bit unfair to criticize Map of Meaning of being elitist or inaccessible or overly academic when it's made for elitist and inaccessible and overly academic readers. I say this because one of the points I'm making in this video is that language should be clear, well understood, accessible. But it doesn't all have to be that way. Sometimes it's fine to have very specified language or language that might not reach everyone. And sometimes that's actually fine, as long as there is alternatives. Which brings me to 12 rules for life. Ah, but hasn't this video already been made if you're gonna talk about 12 rules for life, Mia? Haven't other people already deconstructed 12 rules enough? Haven't they already talked too, too much into Peterson's deeper ideology? Yes. In the description you'll find plenty of videos talking about postmodern neo-Marxism, the 12 rules for life, and Peterson's deeper ideology. But the reason I'm making this video, and the reason I'm talking about Peterson specifically is, I think 12 rules of life is potentially one of the best books I've ever read. But I should say that I don't agree with it at all. 12 rules for life is filled with bad ideological standpoints, weird assumptions about hierarchies and how human psychology works. However, it was very easy for me to understand. And you might say, well, duh, you're an academic. You probably get his academic jargon. And to a point that's true. But 12 Rules for Life has been translated into multiple languages and has become a bestseller. It's not popular just among people like me, but rather, 12 Rules for Life is written in a way that is very easy to comprehend and digest. It's a work where you don't need to have a prerequisite knowledge of philosophy, psychology, or any type of political ideology. You can come in completely blank and completely understand everything that Peterson is saying in 12 Rules of Life. I think that many people make a mistake criticizing Jordan Peterson. They dig right into the deeper ideological mess immediately. That's the first thing that they do. And when you do that, yeah, the ideology looks odd, weirdly shaped together, contradictory, postmodern neo-Marxism. But that's not where most readers start off. Most people who maybe have heard something about Jordan Peterson and want to be interested in whatever he has done, they don't begin with maps of meaning, they don't begin with the lectures. So 12 Rules for Life comes out in January of 2018, and it's one of the biggest bestsellers around the world, for a short period of time anyway. It brings Peterson up to a new level of mainstream fame. He's no longer exclusively a weirdo on the internet, but he is now actually a household name. People in my family talk about Jordan Peterson sometimes. He's in the news, he's in the local paper sometimes. Also, the book is translated into multiple languages and has basically bankrolled Jordan Peterson to the point where he doesn't actually have to work as a clinical psychologist anymore. He can focus on being a public persona talking about lobsters. As I began my research into Dr. Peterson, I realized that I hadn't actually heard all the 12 rules. And that's despite watching many people critique him, both journalists and video essayists on YouTube. 
And despite that, I hadn't actually heard all of them. And I th thought that was a bit weird. Because from the perspective of a newcomer, from the perspective of someone who wants to learn the philosophies of Dr. Peterson, that's the first thing that they encounter. And so, if you are like me, and you haven't actually heard all the rules, the 12 rules for life, well, here they are. Number one, stand up straight with your shoulders back. Number two, treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping. Number three, make friends with the people who want best for you. Number four, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to others today. Number five, don't let your children do anything that would make you dislike them. Number six, set your house in perfect order before you criticize the outside world. Number seven, pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. Number eight, tell the truth, or at least don't lie. Number nine, assume the person you are listening to knows something that you don't. Number 10, be precise in your speech. Number 11, do not bother children when they are skateboarding. Number 12, pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. Now I could dig into what that means in a deeper sense, how that connects to his deeper ideology, how that connects to his ideas on hierarchy, and nihilism, but I don't have to, do I? Just by reading the titles, you kind of already know the gist of his ideas. And that's a theme that follows throughout the entire book. And that is kind of key to Peterson's entire ideology. There are gaps, and it lacks specificity, ironically. But it is specific enough for people to get what he means when he says it. I think Slovenian philosopher Slavoj Žižek put it best in a recent debate. You designate your, under quotation marks, I'm not characterizing here, enemy, or what you are fighting against, as sometimes you call it uh, postmodern neo-Marxism. I know what you mean, all this, from political correctness yes. to these excesses of whatever uh, uh, spirit of envy and so on and so on. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Zizek later goes on to criticize Peterson for the thing that many others have already criticized him about. That postmodern neo-Marxism is a bit contradictory and doesn't really make sense in the traditional meaning of those words. But that doesn't change the fact that the people who follow Peterson, the people who adore Peterson's work, and the people who have really connected to 12 Rules of Life and his lectures and his online persona, they know what he means when he says it. And at a certain point, isn't that more important than the traditional meaning of it? And so I think that actually the writing in 12 Rules of Life is actually kind of brilliant. I don't agree with any of it. I don't agree at all with anything that Peterson is doing. Practically at all, actually. I think everything Peterson stands for, I don't. But I could at least understand it. Sometimes when I read academic books, I don't get it. Honestly, sometimes when I watch YouTube videos by academics, I don't get it either. I, you know, I pretend that I'm pretty smart, but I know my field. And that's basically all I know. And I think it's kind of unfair to assume that everyone is going to get what you're talking about. Because you're using a language that's very established. That's not necessarily true. However, the deeper you dig into Peterson's ideology, the more specific it becomes, the more elitist and jargon-filled and more academic it becomes. And that's a gradual process, obviously. And that's genius, isn't it? When I think about other philosophers, and I'm going to classify Jordan Peterson as a philosopher for argument's sake, but when I think about other philosophers, I have a hard time dealing with the question, where should I start? Like, where should I start 
if I were to read Marx, for example. Should I start with the Communist Manifesto? Should I start with uh, Das Kapital? Should I start reading other philosophers, perhaps, as an introduction? Because much of Marx's early work is a critique of other philosophers. I don't have that with Jordan Peterson. When I read Peterson, I felt that I got everything I needed just from the book. Just from the 12 rules of life. I didn't have to do homework to deal with it. And I think this is a big part of his appeal. Because while the deeper layers of Peterson's ideas and academic jargon is very elitist and very complicated and all that stuff, there's a very clear pipeline. You can start easy. There's an introduction, even though it's in Peterson's language, instead of established academic terms. Instead of talking about hierarchies in relation to classical liberalism or conservatism or whatever, Peterson offers a simple alternative. Lobsters. Look for your inspiration to the victorious lobster with its 350 million years of practical wisdom. Stand up straight with your shoulders back. And that's part of the genius of Peterson's work too, because he has replaced traditional jargon with his own that is more easily accessible to people who might not have a deep education into any academic field. If I want to talk about hierarchies, I don't have to go looking for different philosophers' take. I don't have to I don't have to read about conservatism or liberalism. In Peterson's work, I can talk about lobsters. That's pretty easy in comparison. And that's very forgiving too. And of course, many people have mocked the lobster, so have I. But if you look past the ideological clusterfuck of it all, because well, it's it's bad folks. If you look past that, then you can find a vocabulary and a language that many people can connect to. And it's not really something that I can find an equivalent of anywhere else. Postmodern neo-Marxism might be contradictory in traditional terms, sure, and that might sound silly to people who actually connect to language that is postmodern or Marxist or both. Uh, but it doesn't to them. To the people who do th think about SJWs, for example, postmodern neo-Marxism might sound pretty good. And isn't that kind of what meaning is? At least in a linguistic sense? What I find really interesting is all those things that you've listed, I feel like women have been saying that for a while, mm -hmm. and Peterson come along and said, make your bed in the morning. Yeah. And I've had so many guys, they see me reading a book on the tube or whatever, they come over and they said, Jordan Peterson, like, that whole like making your bed in the morning, it really changed my life. And I'm like, dude, your mum didn't tell you to do that. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, what is it about Jordan Peterson saying that, that is so different and actually gets more of an effect than that being said for time from like teachers, your mum. Your mum telling you to tidy your room is in case the neighbours come around for tea and she wants to show the house off. Jordan Peterson telling you to turn your room, he goes on and adds the context of that. If you can't govern your immediate surroundings, don't expect to be able to govern anything else in your life. It's naivety. We have so many men that do not have the most basic elements of their life in order. And I included me in this for a long time. And now we live in a culture that we want to, we want to go from step one to step six and miss out steps one to five, you know? So your mum telling you to turn the room or your teacher doing it, it doesn't have the same emphasis as a man saying, yeah, no, you do this because it leads to everything else that you're looking for in your life. Sure. Peterson's work might not complete a full ideology. It's not really consistent with itself, and it doesn't really sometimes connect with more mainstream ideas of ideology and philosophy. But does it have to do that? I'd argue that it doesn't. Sometimes ideology can be very few disconnected ideas held together by lobster ideas. And to many people who subscribe to many established ideologies, especially on the left, that might sound silly, but for people who feel lost, for people who don't relate to anywhere on the political spectrum, who feel that maybe their role in society has changed in a way that they did not really agree with, 
maybe they find meaning there. And isn't that why Peterson has garnered success? Isn't that his demographic? And importantly, 12 Rules for Life is not written for other academics. So when academics take a very academic look at 12 Rules of Life and deconstruct it and kind of tear it apart, then there will be inconsistencies and there will be very weird stream of consciousness flows in the book. Well, that's true, the book isn't very well written. Sorry, Jordan, but come on. Chapter 4, come on. And comparing 12 Rules of Life with, for example, Maps of Meaning, you see a sharp contrast in both style and writing. They are written for very different types of readers, and that's fine. It's just that one of them talks a lot about chaos dragons, and the other one talks about making your bed in the morning in order to eventually fight the chaos dragon. And that brings me to the response that I often see. So, after watching this video, you can probably assume that my point is that we should use more accessible language, that maybe we shouldn't demand that everyone reads Kropotkin. And that's true, that is my opinion. And sometimes this is voiced in social media too, but the response that I see to that is somewhere often in the lines of, you don't respect common people, you think that common people are stupid, and you don't think they will get it, and by dumbing down the ideology, by dumbing down the discourse, we are actually helping the opposing side, because our side won't actually learn as much. And I think this is bad, that's a bad take, friend, that's a bad take. And the reason for this I think is pretty evident when it comes to 12 rules of life. It's not that normal people can't read highbrow level philosophy, it's that no one can... I'm sure I could probably plow through Chomsky if I wanted to, and I would have to read other books to complement my reading as I went along, but I don't want to. I don't have time. Unless you are really, really into philosophy or do it as a job, then most people don't have that luxury to do that. Most people just want to live a life. And if it takes half a life to even get into philosophy, then it's kind of inaccessible, isn't it? So Peterson hasn't dumbed down his ideology for 12 rules of life. If anything, he's just made it them more accessible, and considering that his sales figures rose a lot and that he is still significantly popular, I it worked, didn't it? But I'm not saying that we need to do all types of discourse in this way. I'm just saying that there should always be this way available to everyone, so that if you don't want to dig in into a discussion about the Spanish Civil War, you can at least start somewhere. Generic language is useful if nothing else, to grab the attention of more people, and then slowly drag them into the deeper ideology, as Peterson has done. The solution to exclusionary language in academia, for example, isn't to make all a language simplistic or accessible, just that there should always be options. 12 Rules of Life still contains the gist, the large part of the ideology that Jordan Peterson subscribes to, and because of the language that it uses, and the accessibleness of it, it can reach far more people than Maps of Meaning ever could. And because of that, more people than ever subscribe to Peterson's ideology. And sure, they might not know everything about Chaos Dragons, but they get enough, at least enough to subscribe to Dr. Peterson. At least enough to believe what Dr. Peterson is saying when he talks about hierarchies and makeup. So back to my original point then, is he one of the greats? Is he one of the greatest philosophers of the 21st century? No. Adoi. I tricked you to watching the whole video. Oh. Now I wouldn't call him one of the greats because, well, he's wrong. Much of his philosophy is wrong, much of the things that he writes about in 12 Rules of Life is just wrong. And he's, he's just incorrect. He's factually incorrect about many things. However, so were many of the greats when it comes to philosophy. It depends, doesn't it, where Jordan Peterson ends up. 
Because it could be a fad that is currently being kind of ignored, that is currently falling out of fashion. Or he did tap into something when it comes to insecurities, especially among men. I have many male friends who have read the things that Dr. Peterson has written and have actually found help in it and found support in structuring up their own lives. Some of them have also gone on to actually subscribe to the deeper ideology behind that, and I think that's sad. But he's still connected with millions of people. And we can't really ignore that, can we? So the question of, is he one of the greats, is will his impact last or not? Will his impact in the public zeitgeist actually matter in the long run? And of course, I can't answer that. It all depends. It should be said that the way he promoted his ideology, wrong as it may have been, worked. Maybe we should learn from that. Instead of just dismissing everything that Peterson is doing. And that is why many people are both right and wrong about Dr. Peterson at the same time. Sometimes he is contradictory and jargony and academic and elitist in much of his writing. But at the same time, for many other people who don't see that part of Peterson, he is coherent. He's logical. He is pretty good. And so in the end, what do we value more? Do we prefer academic language? Or do we open up a bit? At least here, Peterson knows what he's doing. And literally nowhere else. Thanks for watching that video. Uh, sorry that I was fairly late. I've been going through some things. <laughs> This video was a bit shorter than usual. I gonna, I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have another video up fairly soon too to make up for being late. Uh, and also, I I I want to I want to do more videos in the future. So uh, maybe soon, you know, in a in a in a, in in a, in a few short weeks there will be more content. I want to say special thanks to all my patrons. I love you all that you allow me to do this as a job. It's it's. It's mind-blowing, really. I do want to give special thanks to Alice, Amelia Fletcher, Aragri Konu, Christopher Steinmuller, Kufu Lin, Dirty Computer, Eggsbox, Emil Rutkowski, Emma Not Goldman, Fox Kant, Garrett Gutierrez, Ibrahim Aldridge, Jürgen Danielsen, Katarzyna JJ, Kim, Linus 2.0, Liaren Sagan, Marcin Servan, Nic Nicholas Tervino, Phobos 2390, Rosie, Ryan Kolak, Sam the Kelly, Vindr, William Pietri, Rex, and Yukino. This list is getting long now. <laughs> That's a good problem to have, but uh, it's a long list now. Thanks again for watching the video. Um, I hope you liked it. It's, it's, a, it's a bit different from what I usually do. It's a bit calmer, it's a bit chill, but I hope you like the video. Bye. But, this is a pretty big but. It's not my butt, my butt is small.